Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to go ahead and do something today that I've been wanting to do for a long time due to the fact that I already made a part one to this video, but certain things have caught up in terms of my work life, professional life, so I had to pretty much reschedule this video for now. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move on to part two of whether these rides at Universal Orlando Resorts are plus-size friendly or not. So today we're gonna be moving on to the second part, which is the younger sibling of Universal Studios Florida, and that is Islands of Adventure. It is a park that opened in May of 1999, and it is considered the big thrill attraction park compared to its sister, Universal Studios Florida. However, just because it has a lot of more thrill rides, it possibly means that a lot of these rides are not really meant to be more plus size friendly or more accommodating. So we're gonna go ahead and see if all of these rides are plus size friendly or not. Now, as I previously mentioned in my old video, I am only counting rides, not certain attractions like shows or things of that nature. I'm only counting things where you have to get into a vehicle or some sort of form of a ride and you actually have to use a restraint. So we're basically excluding things like Poseidon's Fury, which is basically a, a special effects show. So that doesn't really count because obviously it's a show where everybody's going to be able to sit or stand up and enjoy. So we're pretty much excluding all of that from this. But with that being said, let's go ahead and start with our first land, and that's going to be Marvel Superhero Island. So in Marvel Superhero Island, you can evidently see a lot of attractions that are inspired by Marvel comics, such as Spider-Man, Hulk, uh, the X-Men. And in particular, the first attraction that you see when you enter Marvel Superhero Island is the Incredible Hulk roller coaster. So this is quite a popular ride at Universal Islands of Adventure. However, it is a ride that is notoriously known for not being the most precise friendly as well. The seat and the restraint are classic, almost similar to a BMN style type of coaster, kind of like the Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. So it is over the shoulder, and then when you lower it, the over the shoulder restraint, you put two seat belts depending on where you sit. If you sit on a regular seat, it's only one seat belt. If it's a modified seat, you use two seat belts. Now, the main issue is even though the restraint is not really that uncomfortable for some, it is the seat that is very, very small and quite tight. So if you're somebody that has a lot of legs or a lot of thighs, this is going to be a very uncomfortable a seat for you to sit in. When you lower the restraint and you put those two seat belts on, it is a very tight feeling when you get close to actually where they have to lock in. So it is very uncomfortable for that. And again, this is a ride where I tell people that you have to really consider how are you gonna get on this ride because it is an intense roller coaster. There's a looping roller coaster and you go upside down. There's certain things that you do in this roller coaster that make it a little bit more intense. So with that said, I do think you should consider visiting the tester. If not, I wouldn't say that this is something that you should try if it's too intense for you. Overall, what I say, Incredible Hulk is plus size friendly. Unfortunately, it's not. But we're gonna go ahead and move on to another ride that's right next actually to the Incredible Coaster, and that is the Storm Force Accelatron. This is basically a classic uh, teacup style type of ride that is basically X-Men themed. It is very, very simple. It's like you basically get on, it spins and spins and spins in circles, so it's nothing too complicated whatsoever. Um, I basically say that most people can fit in this. I will say if you happen to be a larger fella or somebody who happens to have a lot of tummy or a lot, or you're more wide in your upper chest area, you might feel a little bit of tightness and uncomfort when you're sitting on one of these. However, overall, I would say it is a plus size friendly attraction. There's not really that much in terms of the limitations of how you sit there. Overall, would I say if it's plus size friendly? Yeah, I would agree. Now the next attraction is one of my favorite attractions in all of Islands of Adventures, and that is the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. So the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, it is a dark ride with a lot of screen projection and a lot of movement. It's also 3D ride, so you have to wear glasses. I love the immersiveness of this ride. I love the way it's designed. It's super, super unique. And the vehicles themselves are actually omnibovers with three rows and four seats in them. So four people in the front, four people in the middle, four people in the back. You basically sit on a regular seat inside the omnibor and then a large restraint will come and cover all of you. So everybody has the exact same restraint. It's not an individual one per seat. So as long as you sit with somebody who are around the same uh, body dimensions as you or they're the same height as you, you will be completely fine. The attraction is super, super fun. Very, very unique effects in it. I would personally consider it to be one of a kind in terms of its design as well. So again, what I say the immense adventures of Spider-Man is plus size friendly. I highly agree with that. So we're gonna go ahead and drift a little bit off to another land. This is called Toon Lagoon. 
So with Toon Lagoon, we have two attractions. First, we have on the ride, Popeye and Bluto's Build Rad Barges. So this is basically a raft water ride. It is very, very similar to Kali River Rapids over at Animal Kingdom at Disney World. And the raft design is extremely similar. It's very much in a circular form. Everybody sits in the middle and then you hold through your seat belt. Again, this is one that I would say to either consider a tester or just see if you have like any sort of restricting uh, body dimension that could affect you wearing that particular seat belt. It does do a lot of movements and it kind of crashes a little bit from side to side. But overall, would I say this attraction is plus size friendly? In my opinion, it is. I don't find the middle to be as uncomfortable or as tight, especially for somebody like me who has bigger upper chest and more belly and fat in that area. So also be aware that this is a water ride, so you will get wet and excessively filled with water everywhere around you. But overall, I would say it's a very fun attraction, very nice to do in, this, in the hot Florida summer. So would I say it's plus size friendly? I would agree. Now we're going to move on to what is considered probably the main attraction of this land, and that is Dudley Do Right's Rip Saw Falls. I, I personally enjoy this attraction. I don't do it as much as I used to do it when I was younger, but I like the theming. It's basically based on Dudley Do Right's and those comics and the cartoons of those times. But I would say the design of the attraction itself is very similar to Splash Mountain and Magic Kingdom, which basically kind of has a build up to like smaller drops, smaller drops, and then you actually create a bigger build up to like the big drop however i will say the seating in these types of vehicles are more similar to splash mountain at disneyland than disney world and what i mean by that is that in disney world splash mountain has two seats per row and it's four rows which is a total of eight seats in one car however the disneyland one and dudley do rights only have one person per row so it's only four people and you are all pretty tight together inside the little log that you actually go through the ride with and i would say this is very much not a plus size friendly attraction the restraint even though you don't have to lower it as much you don't have to be uh, very tight to it it is quite uncomfortable type of positioning that you have to do in order for for you to sit on the attraction so you kind of basically sit like this you lower it a little bit but almost all the time you have your legs spread out underneath so it's almost like everybody that's in the seat has their legs spread out but they're still positioning themselves like this so when you do like the small drops or like those sections they might be a little bit more uncomfortable than you think they are so again would i say this is a plus size friendly attraction consider your dimensions what part of your body would probably be the most uncomfortable if you were to get on it i would say this is not personally too bad for people that have bigger thighs or bigger legs because that probably won't be the issue but with individuals that have bigger bellies or bigger upper chest area, I would say to really consider doing a test there before getting on this attraction. So would I say it's sex friendly? Mm, a little bit more of a mixed response with that one, but it is depending on your body type. So we're going to go ahead and leave the watery area of Toon Lagoon and we're going to move to the new land, which is basically an attraction as well, which is uh, Skull Island Reign of Kong. So this attraction, obviously inspired by King Kong, a very classic universal figure, um, it's basically a similar attraction to the one that was actually Universal Studios Hollywood in the tram tour. So for this one, I would say it's very plus size friendly. It is a bus that basically sits in several rows. You basically sit on it. You don't have any restraints or anything in between that actually like hold you. It's just a bus. And then you basically put on your 3D glasses. It's a ride with physical props. It has animatronics and it has uh, screen projections as well. So overall, I would say it's plus size friendly because there's really not a restraint to this attraction. I think people of mostly any body dimension can really fit on it. But I will say it does have a lot of shaking. It is a 3D ride, so you do have to wear glasses. So if you're prone to motion sickness, be considerate of that. But overall, what I say is plus size friendly? Absolutely. So leaving all that because that land only has literally that attraction, we're gonna go ahead and move to a very, very famous land and a land that a lot of people adore, and that is the Jurassic Park area. So in the Jurassic Park area, we have right now actually we have three attractions. One of them I'm actually not gonna count for this because even if you were to fit on it, you wouldn't be allowed to ride it. And we'll just talk about that another day. And then we're gonna move on to the two stars of this land. First of all, moving to the original star of this land, and that is the Jurassic Park River Adventure. Obviously very inspired by the one that was in Universal Studios Hollywood. It's basically a big raft ride, which you get to see animatronic dinosaurs, and explore a lot of the scenery from Jurassic Park movies. And then you basically go through this big buildup inside this building, see dinosaurs and then you see a t-rex and you do this 
big, big, big drop. So I will say, even though this one has a lot of seats per row and it's a very big wrap, you do have a little bit of an individual lap bar restraint, which is very similar to the one that I mentioned in my last video, kind of like uh, the Mummy and Gringotts, where it does lower to your lap bar, but it kind of feels like it takes up all of your belly area. Um, this is not as uncomfortable as those two. This is very much more in that field where you can feel a little bit more comfortable. Again, this depends on your body dimensions as well. If you have bigger thighs, bigger legs, or things of that nature I don't think you'll have a lot of frustrations with these but overall I would say this is very much a ride that I think everybody will be able to enjoy it is a little bit intense due to that big big drop now I will say overall Jurassic Park River Avengers a classic I do think it is a very fun ride for the whole family for everybody to really enjoy so if you're able to fit with your friends or your loved ones then I highly recommend it to do it at least once and see how you feel about it again I do consider it to be plus size friendly due to the fact that I have experiences to with people who have bigger body dimensions than me so overall I do agree with it and I love it now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the newest attraction at all of Universal Orlando Resort and that is the Velocicoaster so the Velocicoaster is an attraction inspired by the newer movies the Jurassic World films and the Velociraptors that appear in those films as well it is a very intense fast unique roller coaster which in some parts your only restraint that you use is basically a lap bar and this is a roller coaster that goes upside down. This roller coaster is extremely unique compared to the other roller coasters at the park. It basically only uses the lap bar that, and that is your only restraint on the ride. This particular ride is extremely unique because of its design. It is only has a, a lap bar restraint, which is extremely rare, especially for a ride that does a big top hat of 189 feet. And it goes upside down as well and does a barrel roll. So pretty intense ride, pretty unique style of ride. Again, we're gonna talk about the restraint. Do I think the restraint is plus size friendly? And me personally, as somebody who has rode the attractions a couple times, as somebody who has uh, seen people that are bigger than me in terms of body dimensions get on that test or get on the ride, I definitely have to say that this is not a plus size friendly attraction. Just for reference, my height is 5'5", and I weigh around 248 to 260 pounds. It sometimes fluctuates. But overall, I have had many positive and negative experiences on this attraction. So Sometimes I feel the restraint is extremely tight, or sometimes I feel like it fits just the exact amount that it needs to before it gets too uncomfortable. So again, I would not say if you're somebody who has big thighs, big legs, and then you have big stomach as well, I would not say this is a good attraction for you to really ride until you do the tester because it is extremely uncomfortable in that way. You kind of have to stand up. Another thing is you kind of have to stand up when you seal the restraint because the seat is almost like in an upward position where you have to put both of your legs and then you lower it and it goes from here to here. So you have to hold it right there. And the restraint actually may look small in like videos or pictures, but it's actually quite big for a type of lap bar restraint that it is because it wants you to be fully secured, especially when you go upside down and you go through those areas like the barrel roll because it wants you to be really protected, especially when you go upside down, when you do the launches or when you do the barrel roll. We wanna make sure that you're fully protected at all times. Overall, what I say is the Velocicoaster plus size friendly attraction. I would have to disagree and I know it's a lot of people's favorite roller coaster and it is an amazing ride but I do not think everybody will be able to fit in it and I don't think everybody will be able to enjoy it so now moving on to everybody's favorite land and that is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter the Hogsmeade side again in the last video we talked about the Diagon Alley side which is in Universal Studios Florida we're gonna go ahead and talk about Hogsmeade the original land the first one that opened and we're gonna start with what used to be actually the main attraction of that land and also what I consider to be one of the best attractions in all of Universal and that is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey yes the castle ride so this attraction a very unique style of technology that is utilizing this it uses that robot arm to kind of create a motion simulation while you're like looking at projection domes and looking at actual physical uh, props and sets and animatronics so it is a very unique style of ride it kind of has a similar feeling to soaring but in a more intense way this is not like soaring though this is very much an intense ride and it uses a very tight restraint however i do think if you have big thighs or big legs this probably won't be as much as an issue for you to get on that attraction and it's the people with the big bellies and the big arms like me
me. <laughs> so when I get on this attraction, I fed on it and I fed on it really well. But where you have to actually put out your arms for you to hold it, because it is an over the shoulder restraint, kind of like the one we mentioned uh, for the Hulk. However, this one, it's a little bit more in seal, it's a little bit more enclosed. And you actually have a holder in the middle where you put both of your hands. The problem is the part where I put both of my arms is extremely uncomfortable for me. I always feel like I'm too tight for that type of restraint and it does kind of affect me from really enjoying the attraction itself i do love the ride i think it's so fun i enjoy it so much i love the theming i love the music i love everything that's pretty much involved in it i have to admit when sometimes i go on it i feel extremely uncomfortable and it's probably mainly due to that in itself i know a lot of people actually don't fit on the ride it's been notoriously known for years for not being able to fit people on it would i say harry potter and the forbidden journey is a plus size friendly attraction I would unfortunately have to say no because I don't think it really accommodates every type of person in their body dimension. But overall for me as somebody who is 5'5 five five and I weigh 250 pounds and most of my weight is distributed on my belly and in my chest, I fit on it. I enjoy it. So if you're able to get on it, please do and try it. It is a very unique attraction, very cool design. So, and who knows, maybe it will become your favorite attraction. So, but is it plus size friendly? No. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to one of the best attractions in all of Universal, period, and that is Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Isn't that a fucking name? So basically, this is a roller coaster with seven launches, so that's something that already makes it a pretty unique style of roller coaster. It has a lot of elements like uh, physical props, animatronics, really cool settings. This used to be the home of the former Dragon Challenge attraction, and before that, Dueling Dragons, when it was a former land. And this is one of my favorite attractions. I love this attraction. There's actually two styles of seat in this attraction because it is inspired by the motorbikes and the little like assisting carriage that i like to call it the other side it is very two different seats so they are both lap bar restraints but the motorbike seat is a little bit more open in the leg area so if you're somebody that happens to have a little bit more uh weight in your legs or your thighs i think the motorbike seat would be very much more comforting for you and then the smaller seat which is basically the sidecar it is a little bit tighter and a little bit more enclosed but if you are somebody that are, is able to fit in it it does feel the more protective out of the two when you ride this attraction uh, personally i have rode this attraction many times i fit on both seats and i don't find any discomfort or any uncomfortableness i really love this attraction and the way i feel in it as well however i have seen people that are very big when it comes to uh their tummy area or they have longer legs or even people who are very tall have very much an uncomfortable feeling when riding this attraction or sometimes they don't even fit in the testers that they have outside of the attraction which is good in terms of these attractions in harry potter world because every attraction in this land the tester is exactly right at the entrance so if you have to test it out before you go in it's right there you'll see it right at the front but when it comes to Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure what I'd say is a plus size friendly attraction um, again this is one where it really depends I would say this is more plus size friendly than Velocicoaster Velocicoaster is extremely tight meanwhile this one you may feel tight at certain uh, dimensions or proportions but overall I wouldn't say it's an, it's an entirely uncomfortable attraction whatsoever when it comes to this seating if you're able to fit and if you're able to go on the tester and then ride it absolutely ride it is the best ride right now currently in all of universal very unique it's very much detailed as a story roller coaster and i highly agree with that so i would say yeah i highly agree that it is uh very fun and very unique but what i say is plus size friendly for me personally in my experience and the people that i have seen that are plus size as well ride it we will agree that yes so now that we're out of Harry Potter land, we're gonna go a little bit south to the last land that we have planned here, and this is a land inspired by a famous writer and his set of books, and that is Dr. Seuss, Seuss Landing. This is one of my favorite lands. I grew up loving a lot of books from Dr. Seuss himself, like All the Places You Go, The Cat in the Hat, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and this is pretty much the theming of the entire land here. So, we're gonna go ahead and go first to one of the attractions where we might find a little bit of uncertainty to whether we fit on it, and that is the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride. I personally have only done this attraction one or two times. It is a very cute train ride made for kids and for adults as well that is basically takes you above the entire land of Seuss Landing. And it's a very fun experience because you actually get to see all of the land from a different angle and it looks really cool. You get to see uh, views of other lands that are well in the park. So it is a fun ride by its design. However, the restraint for this ride, I really feel like it was made just for kids because the way it is so small and so tight, it is 
ridiculous to see. It is basically a lap bar, it's just like other rides as well. And it's elongated, so it's even longer as well. But the way it locks into your seat when you're sitting down just feels extremely uncomfortable. Unless you're somebody who literally has like not a lot of belly weight, don't really have any issues at all when it comes to body dimensions in front of your body, like you'll be fine and then it'll be okay. But even with that, I've heard from a lot of people who are not ply size or who are not big saying that they really feel uncomfortable in this ride as well. And it's not a hard stride at all. It is a very soft, slow running train that goes around really cute, very short ride too. So again, I kind of understand why it was made to be that way because you are pretty tall in terms of your distance from where the actual land is and from where the vehicle is. But even with that, the way they designed it, they, I feel like they didn't need to make it as tight as it should have been and just made it a little bit more sealed on the car sides because it's basically supposed to imitate like a train in the sky. So it could have been a little bit more enclosed or a little bit more sealed. Again, would I say this is front size friendly? Absolutely not. Like I would say if you're gonna do this, honestly, just let your kids do this or if you're able to like actually enjoy it. If you're able to fit on it, go at it, enjoy it. But I would not say it's a plus size friendly attraction. And yeah. And one ride I am gonna skip in terms of its information is uh, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. It's basically a Dumbo style ride. Anybody can fit on it. It is open with a large, long, elongated seat belt. Uh, but it's like an open seating. So again, if you, you everybody can fit on it. It's, there's like no restraints, no nothing that will really hold you back like that. It is extremely slow, just like Dumbo. So, you know, it is a fun ride for everybody. It's a plus size friendly, yes, just because. Now, we're gonna move on to our final attraction in this land, and that is the Cat in the Hat to Ride. I personally love this attraction. This is one of my favorite Dr. Seuss books, and I love the theming of this attraction itself. It's a very classic dark ride. It has very classic elements like animatronics, uh, cute projections. It is a little bit worn down, and it needs a lot of refurbishment because it is such an old ride. But I will say it does have a charm and a uniqueness that is kind of missing in a lot of parts in, of Universal. And it's also one of the only classic style or dark rides kind of like et over at universal studios florida so i feel like it does have a place in the park however right, when it comes to the seating so the seating is basically two seats on the front two seats on the back you're basically on like a moving couch type of situation and it is a lap bar that basically is an open extended lap bar so it's kind of similar to the one at uh spider-man but this one does have a net at the bottom so it's basically only the top part that's really covering you because the front is just like a little net section it's pretty much just a long and extended lap bar and then it has like a little net in the middle where you basically hold your legs or feet but it's not really that protective whatsoever one thing about this ride is depending on how big your belly is again or how bigger that dimension of your body is it could be a little bit uncomfortable i wouldn't say extremely uncomfortable because one thing about this ride is this ride was very well known for actually having like really harsh space and used to spin like really rapidly but over the years the attraction has been poorly maintained and hasn't really been refurbished that well to the point where the spins don't work anymore so there's really not that much spinning in that attraction whatsoever and even with that the spinning that it does is not really that harsh or really long or really uh, intense so I feel like anybody can really get on this ride and can really enjoy it. I like it. It's a very fun story. It basically tells the entire story of the cat in the hat. You basically see animatronics of uh, thing one, thing two. You see the fish. You see the cat himself. It's a very fun ride. Very fun for the family and forever. It's a fan of Dr. Seuss books. And would I say it's plus size friendly? I would definitely agree. And I would definitely agree that it's a ride that I think people should consider if they ever go to Islands of Adventures. Side note. So a lot of people are probably going to say that I missed one attraction and that is the Hogwarts Express. I already talked about it in my Universal video. It is basically a train. It's open seated. There's no restraints. Everybody can fit on it. But this attraction is on islands and it takes you to Universal Studios Florida and then from Universal Studios Florida you can also take it to go back to islands. So I would say that it's more of a transportation slash attraction but basically everybody can fit on it and it's pretty accommodating as well so you won't find any issues or anything that will be restricted there. So the Hogwarts Express is obviously it's, it's obviously plus size proof. With that being said that'll be all for today guys. I really had a lot of fun doing this two part video describing pretty much how I feel about certain attractions, how would I think people that are plus size show like me or what different body dimensions would do in these attractions and again I'm hope that I'm able to give you a guide in order to understand how some of these attractions restraints or seating works but also really make sure that you invest it into something that you can actually enjoy again I actually really love doing these videos so if you want me to do one about the four parks at Walt Disney World since I'm an Orlando resident and I have 
an annual pass for Disney and Universal. I will definitely go ahead and do that. Just leave it in the comment below which part would you like me to do and which part would you like me to actually explore and talk about because the Disney parks sometimes have a little bit more attractions and they're a little bit more different. But one thing I will say, Disney, I find in many ways, is a little bit more accommodating to plus size people than Universal. So you might be surprised with what things you can actually fit and what you can't fit at Disney. So if you want to go ahead and see that, just leave it in the comment below. But again, with that said, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at RafiPRC. I post there more than I post usually at my YouTube. But if you want to see more from me, get up with me, and just have little fun conversations about the parks and get updates, I will definitely be posting almost everything there. And with that being said, you can go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe if you desire to, and I'll see you on the next time. Bye.